Hey everybody, this is Matt, and this is February 20th of 2015, and it's not an update video. I haven't really had a whole lot of things going on that I, I can talk about right now, except for the music that I've produced over the last week. As always, uh, check out what you like in the description below, and download what you like off my website, technoax.com. And what are you seeing in front of you is called Propeller Head Reason 7. And it's the major piece of software that I use to produce my electronic dance music, which is basically the dubstep, the electro house, the glitch hop, and uh, the drum and bass as well. Sometimes hip hop, although not so much. Usually I use the cakewalk sonar to do that. Um, but sometimes I do it here as well. There's a lot of cool little things that you can do over here that is not so easy to do over there. Uh, so what you're seeing is like the basic setup. Um, there are three different views that you usually use when going into uh, Propeller Ed Reason 7. You've got the instrument rack here, which has all the instruments and you can basically experiment around with different instruments and effects to get the sounds that you want for your your song or your music track down below is where you pro, uh, you program all the the notes you can program the notes here to do what you want um as always you've got like a a, a piano key um rollouts you basically tell you what notes that you're composing in <laughs> So you can program the notes here and basically it will basically play automatically when you press play. And that is how you audition things before you get everything to final. Down below you have basically your play bar. You've got the play button here. You got the stop, fast forward or rewind or record. You also can basically skip around and set your loop areas. And a, lo a loop area basically is a repeatable block of space that basically repeats when you press play and you're going to wait a measure and then it's going to repeat again if you have the loop button on oh my god all right now after a measure it's going to repeat again this basically tells you where you are at the mix and as far as the measure that you're at the time that you're at this is your BPM. You set your beats per mission, uh, your tempo right here. Uh, right now I'm at 120 BPM, but I can set it to 140, which is the dubstep tempo, of course. And we can basically experiment with a lot of things here. Usually I just use the play button and then I uh, set the, uh, the, um, uh, the loop areas usually with this, or basically I can make drab and uh, drag and drop the left and right sliders here over here so one of the reasons why i'm doing this is uh, a lot of you guys have actually asked what i used to produce music and i've always told you guys um you know what i used and tell you about it but i haven't really shown you what i do and so this is a good little opportunity to basically present an overview of how things work around here there's going to be nothing really advanced here uh, I know some of you guys may have seen this before, and if you have, it's all right. You can go along with and rage about how bad I am at describing things real quick. So anyways, um, the major views here, once again, there's another major view here, which is the mastering section. Right here, you have like an instrument slider and instrument effects rack right here. And this usually use this section to at last to apply different volumes to instrument tracks right here or a major the the mastering volume here you can apply um uh, uh mastering effects like echo or room and plates uh reverbs um right here if you want usually i don't do that i, I apply a reverb to individual tracks uh to basically tweak uh, individual tracks the way that I want them. But you can basically go in here and apply universal effects to everything if you want to. You also have a default mastering suite, which you can change into either dance or bass and drum or hip hop, wh whatever you like. This is made for uh, a wide variety of genres of music. Uh, that you could do. I'm going to choose dance because I like that. Or usually I do bass and drum for drum and bass and hip hop for glitch hop basically. 
Uh, let's see. But as you can see, let me get back to the uh, the middle rack here, the rack section. This is the rack view, and basically the rack view is made to um, mimic the way analog instruments and effects work if you were a, a professional producer. Uh, a lot of times with analog instruments, you want to buy your instruments and your effects in and your uh, guitar effects processor in in rack effect form and the reason for this is that it's a lot easier to store things in in a, in a stack it's a lot easier to to organize your instruments into things that you want uh, so you can find the settings that you want and so the front of this is made to look like the front of basically your effects processors or the front of your instruments so uh, take for instance this echo setting you have a lot of like different uh, knobs that you can basically um, twist and turn according to how you want that effect to sound and how you want it to affect the overall mix or whatever uh, instrument that you're you're attaching this effects processor to. Um, once again, uh, all of these things have their own knobs and, and effects settings. You can have like patches that you can um, uh, load up if you want to experiment around with different effects that have been already programmed into the instrument. Uh, you can also uh, basically uh, get into more advanced settings uh, uh, if they have them. You can affect like the different uh, parameters of the pre-delay right here. This is really trippy because you can actually like, affect the, the, the delay of the reverb and have a little cheap echo setting right here as well. So that, that is the basic overall of the front. And then there's also a backside to this rack, rack mount view, which you can use by pressing tab on your keyboard. And what you're seeing is basically the, the, uh, the back section of what you were seeing before. This is the front and this is the back. And it's kind of like a stereo system where you have all the wires going every which way to your speakers and to the, the amplifiers. It's kind of the same concept in that um, you wire up your different devices in the back uh, according to how you want. And this is the man mastering section and you have an FX send where you're sending your audio signals to the different FX processors here. So you've got an input right here it's coming from the FX send here, and the output of your your FX processor is going to your FX return over here. Um, it's it's this is once again the mastering section. Um, when you get to the instrument section, there's a lot of similar things going on, but basically that's what's going on over here. And right now I've already um, like constructed a basic instrument here. It's a basic wobble, so I'm going to. Uh, name it as such, basic wobble. Uh, when you're doing a lot of instruments in uh, Propeller Red Reason, you probably want to name your instruments. And the reason is to keep track of everything. Um, it's If you come back to your projects after a while and you find that really all your stuff is named Combinator This and Combinator That, like this, you're going to have a little bit more difficult of a time figuring out what you did all the way back then and uh, I, I assure you that if you allow a significant amount of time to pass between the time you complete a song and then the time you re revisit a song you're going, you're going to basically forget a lot of what you do and so the combinator you know naming your things basically will help you guys in maintaining a little bit of an organization and 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 uh, basically going through and uh you know uh um remembering what you've done over the you know, over the project and everything so this is uh right here is a basic wobble and i'm going to reconstructed it i constructed it in an earlier take and i messed up on my my speaking skills so we're going to do this again as you can see it involves basically a combinator and it involves a line six to two mixer and then it involves something called a Thor polysynthesizer. And it's one of the major things that we use to construct different instruments such as bass wobbles and dubstep uh, wobbles 
and also glitches and also like that. There are a lot of different instruments, but this is basically the major one right here. Uh, you have down here, you've got an equalizer, a compressor, and a maximizer, and a stereo imager, and also uh, a scream for distortion. So we'll start out with like the combinator and, and tell you what that's all about, because that's one of the most important things about doing music in this particular setup. Um, the combinator um, uh, div uh, diverges a little bit away from the analog uh, side of things when when presenting you with an interface, and it veers more towards a programming side. A combinator is basically almost like you can envision it as a, a function that you call in a programming language. You would find the, the function, but you call it elsewhere in the program. and this helps with the portability of the program. And the combinator is a bit of the same thing where you can construct the instruments that you want in, in, uh, in uh, your, your setup here in, in the, the, the confines of the combinator. But when you're done with that, you can basically save the combinator patch as um, whatever you want to name it. You can save it and then you can recall it later uh, when you want to reuse that instrument in another song or basically double it up in a different uh, in a different um, section of the same song that you've got here. So we're going to rename it Basic Wobble 2, right? Okay, so we're going to get together uh, a mixer, a line mixer. And what this is, it's exactly what you think it is. It's a, uh, it's a device that mixes sounds of different instruments together. I usually all do this all the time because I don't know how many instruments I'm going to add to a particular combinator. But as you can see, there's a master out that goes to the from devices uh, to the combinator. And then you've got all these inputs that will go to the master. And you've got an FX send right here. And you've got an FX return right here. And that helps you to organize your 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 compositions for sure so we're going to right click here and we're going to add a thor polyphonic synthesizer usually these synthesizers come with their own presets and one that's already loaded up when you load up the instrument and that's the one that usually loads up uh, but usually we just hit reset device to reset everything back to their default settings. All right. So uh, the, the synthesizer right here is basically um, the, similar to every other synthesizer that you would find, even outside of propeller at reason. Uh, usually you've got your oscillator section and those oscillators produce the tones that you hear in music. And then you've got everything else which affects what's being output by the oscillator. Uh, you've got your uh, your envelopes which affects the the attack and the the decay and the release of your synthesizer. So we'll go ho we'll, we'll go ahead with the the amp envelope, right? So we'll put the amp envelope up to about a second, and we'll press a button. <laughs> And as you can see, it takes a little bit more time to reach its full amplitude. And then also you've got your release, which we, we can put all the way up to, let's say, uh, five seconds. And as you can see, the release time is a lot longer. And so it takes a lot longer for the volume to go back from its full potential to its zero. Uh, you have uh, other more complex things in this envelope like decay and uh, um, uh, and sustain. This decay time is basically the time it takes to get down to a certain level to where the sustain is. Uh, and the sustain is the level at which uh, the, the signal eventually falls to. It eventually stabilizes at when you hold the key, key down. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, so what we've got here uh, also is 
after you produce the sound, you filter it out. We're going to put the sustain all the way at the high. We're going to put the release all the way at zero, right? Um, and then after you produce the sound using your oscillators, we're going to put another analog synthesizer here, route it here, and you can control these uh, uh, oscillators in different ways. You can detune them. You can tune them either octave or semi. Um, you can detune them uh, a little bit, usually usually less than semi. They're, they're kind of like things that you can use to basically um, affect the sound in different ways. Uh, once you keep put the sound in, we're going to basically put the semi back that, down to zero here. And uh, detune them a little bit right here. So then afterwards, you can affect them using filters and a different effects like that. And the filter is really the major thing for things like wobble dubstep basses, right? Uh, so this is the filter right here. This is the major low pass filter that uh, usually comes in the pre default setting of Thor. And uh, it's a low pass filter. And what that means is that it filters out higher frequencies based on a cutoff frequency. So I've got a cutoff frequency of 2.9 kilohertz, 2.09 kilohertz, I'm sorry. And um, that uh, basically affects it in that um, you can see that it basically affects the sound of the synthesizer. So if I, if I hold down the key and I uh, adjust the frequency of this filter, you can see that it affects the uh, the sound in that it affects the number of frequencies that you can hear when I press a key. And that's the basic principles behind a wobs uh, a wobble dubstep uh, bass, right? Okay, so we're gonna basically construct a basic bass here. We're going to basically get a um, some automation in here because we don't really want to uh, be the one holding down this key and doing this all the, every time we want to make a wobble dubstep. We need a little bit of automation. So we utilize something called a low frequency oscillator or LFO1. We do a tempo sync on that and we set the tempo sync up to three one eighth triplet, uh, which is basically a triplet kind of thing um and then once we do that we have to route the low uh, lfo to the low pass filter and affect that how we want to so we go down here to source select lfo1 and select our destination which is filter one frequency and then we select an amount that we want the LFO to affect the frequency by. Which is good. Uh, we probably want to adjust the frequency a little bit to have a little bit more of an effect on the sound. Basically what you're hearing is basically the, the lower sounds of the frequency. Um, but we can adjust that by uh, once again adjusting the frequency of the low pass ladder filter frequency one one of the other things that we can do is actually adjust the res uh the resonance which is a parameter of the filter that allows uh certain frequencies to bleed through to about that right you know um uh, some other things that we can do is we can set a diff an additional filter up to kind of comb out frequencies perhaps and uh, we can also thicken up the sound by adding a chorus with the rate at zero for those of you guitarists the chorus is a familiar effect but you can also use it to basically thicken up a synthesizer as well 
And it's up to you whether that sounds better than the mono signal or not. Uh, usually there's no set rules about what makes things uh, sound good or not. Um, there's a basic guidelines, but uh, you basically adjust those guidelines to how you want things to sound. Uh, so usually in Propeller Ed Reason, the major effects that you apply to uh, the synthesizer are basically four things. We've got one, uh, they are all in the studio effects, and one of it is a M-class equalizer, which basically you use to uh, cut out certain frequencies and boost others. You can also use a, a compressor which makes the volume of a signal more consistent. It basically compresses the range of volume that you hear uh, in an instrument by a little bit. Usually you can also do a maximizer, which basically smooths out signals so that there are less popping sounds and it sounds a little bit um, more professional. And also, you have a stereo imager, which you can use to widen uh, the sound of an instrument or narrow it to a mono file. So going through, usually what I do is I, I cut out something along the lines of 800 hertz or somewhere along the lines of before 800 or after 400 hertz. And I usually do a ridiculous amount, like, like 12 de decibels. And I do a Q of 1.3 to kind of affect the overall mix. So this is bypassed. And this is with the equalizer applied. And you can see that you can hear the difference. A lot of the things that um, um, it needs to happen with these things is the mid frequencies uh, are usually cut out because it sounds a lot better without them. We call them scooping in, in uh, heavy metal, and a lot of times that applies to modern music as well. A lot of times we want to boost certain frequencies, uh, we'll go with uh, maybe 1.5 kilohertz, just um, set the gain to a little, a little bit uh, narrow of a range of frequencies. And also, we all want to put a high shelf on there as well. Also, being as that we want this to be a bass, we can probably set the bass a little bit uh, higher as well. All right. So, um, once again, this is very rough. This is basic concept kind of thing. Usually, I spend a lot more time adjusting the frequencies according to how I want. One of the other things that I do with the poly, uh, Thor polyphonic synthesizers is um, with basses, we don't want to play one note at a time. We basically want to play only one note at a time. And usually with uh, every synthesizer, they've got a polyphonic mono retrig or a mono legato uh, 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 setting that you can set here. Usually we go for a mono retrig and we put the portamento on. A uh, portamento is basically a slur between notes. It'll uh, basically provide a transition between a lower note and a higher note or a higher note and a lower note as such. Um, for more of a de demonstration, we'll kind of set this all the way up. As you can see, it, it, it's ha it provides a transition between uh, different frequencies of notes. We'll set this a little bit. It makes things a little bit smoother, I guess you could say. So we'll continue on with the compressor. And once I get, once again, uh, compressor is more to uh, compress the volume uh, of a signal so it's more consistent. Uh, so if something is like really loud at its loudest point and it's really soft at its softest point, um, this can basically narrow the range between its uh, softest and its loudest points uh, to give it more of a consistent sound. So we're going to basically increase the input gain here. So it, it triggers the, the threshold here. Uh, and then we're going to give it a compression ratio. The higher the compression, the, the less range of, of sound you want. And we'll give it like a, an attack and release that's really short as well. 
So as you can see, like, if you bypass it, uh, the, the compressor gets rid of some of the, the popping sounds and a lot of the variation that you would hear without it. And then we go into the maximizer and we can uh, uh, press a soft clip or a four millisecond look ahead. What this does basically is it reduces some of the transients, some of the popping sounds that you might hear in the in the synthesizer, and it basically smooth things sm smooths things out to give things a more professional shine. You can't really tell much of a difference, but. Uh, it, it definitely translates to a little bit more of a professional machine here. And down below we have the stereo imager in which you basically can affect the width of a signal based on um, it, the frequency that's being transmitted. Here you can select the cutoff frequency. So if you want a really low sound below say 600 Hertz, that would be your base signal right here. And this would be your high band right here. So this is your low and your high. And usually what I do here, not all the time, but usually what I do here is I, I can set the bass signal to a mono and I can say, set the high band to more of a, a, a stereo image. Or you can do the exact opposite here where your high band is more mono and then your bass signal has the stereo image to it. Usually I do a little bit in between and I put the, the bass in a little bit more of a focused area. Uh, so that's the basics here. I realize this video is going on a lot longer than I uh, previously planned. Um, let's see, what else can I show you though? I can show you some of the creative effects uh, after you do a lot of this processing here. You can apply creative effects to make things different. A lot of times we like to apply things like distortion. And for that, we have the Scream 4 distortion unit, which is really popular among uh, dubstep artists to give things a little bit more of an edge to it. Right now we've got this, which is really loud. I apologize if that, that got your ears and everything like that. We'll, we'll put this down a little bit more. So it's, it's video friendly, right? <laughs> We'll cut this out for a little bit. Right now you have a bunch of settings that you can do with the Scream 4 di distortion unit. Uh, and you can affect those parameters as well by the damage control, which is the distortion, which is the distortion control. And you can also affect the, the parameters listed on the left and right here. So with the fuzz, you've got the tone and the presence. And um, you can assign like uh, additional EQing and, and body effects to it as well. All right. Um, I think that's the basics right there. Uh, uh, please let me know if you enjoyed this. Uh, I figured I'd do this in lieu of an update video because it has a little bit more to do with what I'm doing right here. Uh, let me know what you think. If you want a little bit more of a formal explanation of all of this, let me know. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you.